I have admitted as evidence a demonstrative, uh, it was an animation of an accident reconstruction after or you know, while the accident expert was reconstructing the accident saying, I measured this, I measured that, I took a picture. All the foundation was there. It would have been the same as a flip book of his pictures. It was just a animation. So I let that in as a demonstrative. Right. Yeah, no, the foundation was all of his words. Right. It, this car here, this car here, closing speed, impact. Right. We, we yeah, that undue prejudice balance that every judge has to go through on evidence is so individually temperamental. You, you, you can take all the evidence classes in the world and never know what three judges are going to do. Everything you heard. <laughs> 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 Except in Texas, <laughs> where we have 50 courthouses with no electricity in the courtroom. It does you no good to have PowerPoints unless you have a generator on the front lawn of the courthouse and run a line in through the window that um, will let you run your projector and your computers and all that kind of stuff. Didn't they have no. TVA in Texas? <laughs> <laughs> Not in some parts. Number That's two, they come to fill it people, the studies I've seen indicate that people remember 20% of what they hear and 40% of what they see and 90% of what they hear and see. And PowerPoint and opening statements and closing statements are devastatingly effective. And um, when they started to be done, invariably the side that had a good PowerPoint or that used a PowerPoint on direct with their expert was winning case after case after case. So um, remember that. We also recently had a judge in Alameda County who I thought struck an interesting balance because he ordered that the parties had to disclose the slides ahead of time, but only to him. So he screened them to see whether anything was too argumentative and, and before he, he let it go but to the jury. If you're going to show it to the jury, it explain? can't be, in my opinion, and I, this is close because it's going into your work product and it gives the other side an outline of your opening arguments or your closing arguments, but if you're going to show it to the jury, I think the other, I think the other side is entitled to see it, and I think the work product exception um, it flies out the door as long as you're stipulating this is the PowerPoint I'm showing to the jury. Because you wouldn't want, you know, the subliminal frame where, you know, every one hundredth of a second you see a picture of Adolf Hitler, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, superimposed on the picture of the, of the plaintiff or the defendant or something like that. I mean, we, we do that with stacks of hundreds. If you do lose one of these PowerPoint things, be of strong heart because one of the better lawyers around our courthouse stands up next to a flip chart and he writes down every question, he writes down every answer. He could do his, I'm sure he could do his PowerPoint the same way. We are gonna show you a picture of Mickey Mouse and then go through it. I don't think you can stop somebody if you're wrong, right? I have to say that writing on charts makes me much more nervous than the use of PowerPoint because you don't know what's coming and uh, there are problems. Uh, with what gets written. I think that there aren't objections because counsel uh, follow the rule of trying not to interrupt each other's opening or closing statements, but there certainly could be.